Hey everyone and welcome back to another Common Tennis video. Today I've got the Prince Beast 104 to review for you guys. Now before we get into today's video, just want to thank everybody who has subscribed to this channel and hit that notification bell. And if you haven't done so already, make sure you guys hit that like button in this video, subscribe to this channel, and hit that notification bell so you don't miss any of the new posts that are coming out every Sunday. And as some of you guys know, I'm now a brand ambassador for Top Court which is an online tennis training platform. And if you guys wanna check out Top Court for free for two weeks, check out the link down in my description. I've been watching the Western and Southern Open and I saw those big serves coming from John Isner, all those aces, and I wanted to try out his racket. I accidentally picked up the oversized version. I've got the 104 square inch version, which is the oversized head shape. But still, I was excited to try it out because I've never actually played with a 104 inch head size. So I was excited to see how that would be on the court. I know that the oversized heads offer a lot of power. So I was excited to see what that would be like on court. And I was interested to see if that would even suit my game. All right, guys, before I take you on court to show you guys how this racket performs, I'm gonna go over the specs of the racket with you guys. If we take a look at the head size here, it's 104 square inches, like I said. I picked it up by accident. I wasn't looking at the head size. I was looking to get that John Isner one, which I believe is a 98 square inch, but you know what? Sometimes it's a good surprise, and I was excited to take it out on court regardless and see how the 104 square inch Prince Beast performed. The length of the racket is standard, 27 inches, and the strung weight is also a pretty standard 10.4 ounces or 295 grams. Now the strong balance of this racket is an even balance and that's something you don't see so much anymore. You see a lot of head heavy or handle heavy rackets and this one strikes that even balance and it's something I haven't played with before on this channel. I was excited to see how an even balanced racket would perform out on the court. The swing weight comes in at 317 and the flex is a nice comfortable 67. This is a thicker beam racket as you guys can see with the 23, 25, 22 millimeter tapered design and it's made of that trademark Prince Tech Stream. Now the string pattern on this racket is a 16 by 19 and so in combination with that huge head size and that open string pattern, I knew I was gonna get a lot of bite from this one as well as a ton of power. I'm gonna take you guys on court with me and you guys are gonna see how this racket actually plays and how the ball flies from this racket and the speed at which I can hit the ball using this Prince Beast racket. Now guys, make sure you stick around after the play test video where I'm gonna share my mic score with you guys where I go over six different categories giving this racket a score out of 10 in each one of those and those include styling, power, control, maneuverability, feel, and cool factor. And then I give it a total mic score out of 60 at the end and that's gonna be coming up right after this play test. Now, just going over some of my initial impressions with this Prince Beast racket, I've never played with an oversized racket, so I was really curious to see what was gonna happen. I'm pretty sure Serena Williams plays with a 104 square inch racket. You guys can correct me down in the comments if I'm wrong. At the very least, it would be good enough. If it's good enough for Serena Williams to play with an oversized head, I think I should be able to handle it as well. So I was excited to take it out and see what I could do with this extra spin and power that I get from this oversized racket. I gotta say it was pretty hard to adjust to, especially since I'm coming from a relatively small head size with my Yonex V-Core 95 that I use on a daily basis. So I did have a bit of an adjustment period to get used to that oversized head and how the ball really flies off of the racket. So I was definitely hitting a lot of unforced errors at the beginning, hitting it long or spraying it a little bit. Most of my errors were going long in the court just from that extra power that was coming off of this racket. It was really launching the ball. As you guys can see in this video, I'm getting a ton of power on the ball, but it was definitely hard to wrangle that in and handle that power. And even though this one has that open string pattern, which does give it a lot of bite and spin on the ball, it was difficult for me to get a consistent feel from the ball. Sometimes I'd be really happy, I'd get a nice clean hit with this racket, but then I'd feel like I'm doing the exact same swing and I'd be spraying it long. So it was really hard for me to strike that balance with this racket. And especially with the last few play tests that I've had with the Head Prestige Pro and the Prince Phantom 93P, those ones were really control oriented, very easy for me to pick up and play with. So it was a little bit harder to go into this racket here with this Beast 104. It really is a beast and it handles like it. It's got a lot of power and sometimes it gets a little hard to control. Now the key with this racket is to try to harness that power using that open string pattern and the extra bite that you get with the extra space that the ball has to slide across the strings. So you really gotta maximize your top spin with this racket to be able to have a decent playthrough with it. Now some of the things that were really good, like I was saying, was the power. So it was definitely great to have extra power just available for me without much effort. And I found that I was able to hit some huge shots with this, even hit some winners. And like I said, without putting too much effort, you can just blast away with this thing. 
and it's also pretty forgiving in terms of the sweet spot because of that large head size the sweet spot is huge on this racket so i found that i was getting a huge pop from the racket even if i was hitting it a little bit off center and that's definitely a benefit for this racket. I also think this racket has a pretty interesting look. It's pretty unique with this black and red combination, especially paired with the head hawk touch string that I have in it here. It does look pretty cool. With the extra wide beam and the lower weight, it just didn't suit it well in terms of maneuverability. I found that when the gusts pick up, I found it made it even harder. It was like the racket was getting picked up with, by the wind, which is something I'm not used to feeling. And so something I didn't like in terms of the maneuverability and especially at net, I think something to do with that, with the balance of the racket made it a little bit tougher for me to get into the right spots for my volleys. And so I didn't find great maneuverability with this racket. All right, guys, now let's go over the mic score of this Prince Beast 104. So starting off with the first category, which is styling, as I mentioned in my initial impressions, one thing that I liked here is this kind of like red accent that they have going on in the hoop with the black around it. But one thing that I really didn't like is they kind of have this like carbon fiber weave look right here, which in the Prince Phantom racket that I reviewed last week, I really loved because they went with that all black carbon fiber exposed look. Whereas in this, you have this kind of like swamp green looking color here, and it just doesn't look good to me. I don't know what it is about it, but I don't know if you guys can maybe see that in the camera there. It's not a good look in my opinion for this racket. And with this oversized head shape, it looks a little bit goofy out on court. It seems like too big to be out there, especially when you compare it to some of the smaller rackets. It looks a little bit bulky and too big and just not something I like for the styling of this racket. And so for those reasons, I give the Prince Beast a six out of 10 in styling. Next up is the power of this racket. And as you guys know, this is the real strength of this racket. It's got that huge head size, wide open sweet spot with the big open 16 by 19 string pattern on this racket. And this thing was an absolute rocket launcher out on the court. And so for those reasons, I'm giving this racket here a nine out of 10 in power. Like the name says, it's a beast and it is gonna deliver some huge powerful shots and especially on the serve. If you can flatten out your serve with this thing, it's gonna be an absolute missile going into the court. Next up is the control of this racket. And so for the control, like I was saying, I found that it was really difficult for me to adjust, especially going from those really high control rackets like the Head Prestige Pro, like my Yonex V Core 95, and like the Prince Phantom 93 that I reviewed just a week earlier. This one I found that I was spraying the ball long a lot and it was really difficult for me to keep it in the court and control it. And I found it very difficult, even with that open string pattern, applying a lot of topspin, I found it difficult to keep the control on this racket and keep that ball wrangled into the court where I wanted it. So for those reasons, I'm giving the Prince Beast a six out of 10 in control. All right guys, next up is moving on to the maneuverability of the racket. Like I was saying in my initial impressions, the racket is a thick beam racket. It's pretty light. It gets pushed around on the court a little bit, especially when the bigger, harder shot is coming towards you. And I found that with that oversized head shape, it was very difficult for me to control it on the volleys and get that racket moving where I wanted to. And so for those reasons, I'm giving this racket a six out of 10 for maneuverability. Next up is the feel of the racket. And like I said, this oversized frame here, it does not lend itself well to the feel. I found that I wasn't as connected on the shots as I would have liked especially since I was losing some of the stability because of the lack of weight in this racket. And like I said, going from that really nice Prince Phantom 93P that I reviewed last week, it was really hard and I really did not enjoy hitting with this one as much. And so for those reasons, I'm gonna give the Prince Beast 104 a six out of 10 for feel. And finally is the cool factor of the racket. Now this is a racket endorsed by John Isner. So there is a little bit of a cool factor there. It gives you that impression that once you take it out on court, you're gonna be able to deliver some huge serves and aces, kind of get that inspiration from watching John Isner play with the same racket. Even though it is a different head size, I find that this one might even offer more power on the serve. So you might get even more inspiration to hit those aces when you take it out, which I think adds to the cool factor. And also, like I said in my previous Prince racket review, the Prince line is something that adds a little nostalgia to a lot of people. It sparks a lot of conversation on the court because there's not many people that play with the Prince rackets anymore. And that's something that I think adds to the cool factor. But in terms of the styling, like I said earlier, it is a little bit goofy looking on the court because it is such a big racket and bulky. I think that detracts from the cool factor. And so for those reasons, I give this racket a seven out of 10 in the cool factor. And now finally, when we tally all those together, we get a final mic score of 40 out of 60. And you guys can see how this racket compares to all the other rackets that I reviewed on the channel right here. All right guys, thank you so much for watching this review of the Prince Beast 104. Let me know down in the comments below if you had a chance to play with or review an oversized racket. I'd love to know your opinion, what you guys think of oversized rackets and how they compare to maybe the mid-size or mid-plus rackets and what you guys prefer. 
If you guys haven't done so already, make sure you guys hit the like button on this video, subscribe to this channel, and hit the notification bell so you don't miss any of the future reviews and tennis videos that I'm gonna be releasing every Sunday. All right guys, thank you again so much for watching and I'll see you all next Sunday.